In a recent poll, I asked you guys if you thought the sports card hobby was going to become more international in the future. In this video, I'm gonna go over the poll results as well as share my own thoughts about this. So from the poll, 33% of you said yes, absolutely to the moon. The international, the sports card hobby is going to become more international. 49% said yeah, maybe a little bit more, and 19% said nah, it doesn't have deep enough roots in most places. So about 82% of you said in, it will continue to increase in in some way or another. Uh, I am in that 82%. I do think it's going to continue to increase, and I think it's it's pretty clear. I don't know if it's going to be like to the moon or a little bit more, but I, when I look at different regions of the world. I only see how this is going to continue to grow. Now, of course, I've been living in China for a long time, and China has a pretty deep embedded sports card community already uh, for the last, I don't know, 10 to 15 years, something like that. But I feel like there's actually space for significant growth here still. Um, part of that is, you know, part of the reason I think that is because it's just now where you start to see some of the larger companies making, trying to take steps into China. Um, there's some things I've, I've, I've learned about over the past year or so of, of different efforts that some of the big names, some of the big companies that are in the sports card world are, are what they're trying to do to kind of make this, this step into China. I'm going to share more with that in the future when I talk about the, the the business that I'm that I'm working on building with you know that I'm that I'm working on building because so I've got some big plans for that because I, I absolutely do think that it's it's only just beginning you know the, the the Chinese sports card market is large but it's insulated it's its own separate ecosystem there's a there's some links between the Chinese market and other markets through like eBay but it's not so easy for people in China to be involved in eBay. So it mostly becomes an insular thing. And I think there's a lot of possibilities for a, a, a more cohesion between the sports card world here and the sports card world elsewhere, which I think will increase the interest in sports cards in China over time. Uh, and you, you've, I've been seeing the other thing that I'm finding that, that shows me that, that it's going to keep going up and keep increasing in China. So first of all, you know, if you look at some of this, the data from eBay, you can see that the number of people in China that are participating in sports cards has been continually increasing year to year. But part of the thing is I'm also seeing more interest in sports you wouldn't expect to be interested in China. You know, the baseball, for example, the Bowman First and Bowman First Autos are extremely popular now. If you look at even relatively no-name no name people who are prospects with a, a little bit of upside, you start to see more and more people bidding on these cards. Just I've, I've noticed this just like month by month over the past year, there's more people interested in that. There's more baseball cards, um, you know, and, and packs and wax and stuff that you can buy, baseball related stuff now than before. And you can kind of see the same in, in football, you know, the 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 Football's a, a little easier for somebody who doesn't know the sport to kind of get into the sports card realm of it just because it's it's so QB heavy and there's only a handful of names you really need to know. So so it seems like that's also, you know, there's a growing interest in, in football cards. Month by month, it seems like the cards are getting more bidders. Um, in my in what I'm seeing so you know I think I think it's just in, in many ways I think China's sports card realm has the potential to increase a lot another reason I think that is because there's not a lot of places for wealthier Chinese people to invest their money you know the stock market is not really done the same way in China as it in the, is in the US people don't invest in it quite the same way the real estate market is where people traditionally in China have been putting their money but it's it's so volatile and there's an overabundance of supply that it's it's not a very healthy market and people who are more, making more wise decisions with their money right now aren't putting their money into that space there's not a whole lot of other options you know in the u.s there tends to be more places that people can put their money here there's not but there's a lot of people with a lot with a lot of money i mean the the the, the financial the economy in china over the past 20 years has created quite a large number of middle class and wealthy people that want to invest in things and want to put their money into things. And a lot of people are going into sports cars and continuing to see possibilities in that space. So I, I feel like this is a this is something that's just gonna keep increasing over the next period of time, I, I think. And you can kind of see also, you know, if you look at the data in Australia, you can also see this constant kind of growth. I mean, there's a, a quite a vibrant internal market. If you if you follow up what's happening in Europe also, it's increasing pretty consistently there. And I think that's just at the beginning of the phase of things there. I mean, and if you watched Card Collector 2's video recently on his visit to the to the um, London sports card show, it was vibrant and it was mostly young young people. So I feel like you know that's probably the kind. I know there's there's shows going on 
in France and Spain and other places around Europe. Uh, and I feel like Europe has the possibility. I mean, there's a sports culture too, you know, soccer specifically. Sorry, I almost said football. I've been out of America so long that I think of soccer as football and, and football as American football. I have to re refocus my, my language when I move back to the US. But soccer is so popular over there um, and, and cards are becoming pop more popular. So I feel like there's there's a lot of room there. And then you start to see, you know, other other places, the Philippines, it's, it's you know, sports are super popular there. The the GDP is a bit lower. It's a little harder for people to, spend, to afford the, ex, the supreme expense of, of sports cards nowadays. But I feel like there's there's a growing, there's a community possibility there. Japan and South Korea, you know, there's there's a lot of room for growth in those places as well. And there's a real interest in, in certain things. In Japan, I think it's interesting, you know, from what I understand, the basketball market in sports cards is really the, the most vibrant one in Japan, despite the fact that baseball is so popular. So I kind of wonder if sometime down the road, if there might be more interest in, in baseball cards in Japan, it seems like it would only make sense. And then I wonder too about in the future of, of other emerging markets as they as they become more solid, you know, markets like uh, like like Brazil, for example, I could see Brazil, I don't I don't have never really heard anything about sports cards in Brazil. But it makes sense to me like soccer cards could become extremely popular there. It's a soccer community like crazy. They love soccer down there. You know, I could see as 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 the financial if the financial situation for the average individual Brazilian gets a little bit better over time, I could see how how it could become more and more popular in a place like that as well. Um, you know, so I, I feel like there's a number of these kinds of places where as it's getting a community, the community is pretty young and it, and, and, and the possibilities for growth in, in those places seem to be quite strong for different reasons. So personally, I do think that the sports card world is going to continue to grow internationally quite a bit. Uh, it's, I think it's going to outpace U.S. growth. I mean, U.S. is the hub of the sports card world for sure, and it will always be. But I do think these other places are beginning to have a stronger sense of a community related to sports cards, which is, I think, the root of how sports cards will continue to evolve in those places is if, if it has a, a kind of community sense of it. People will look back later on nostalgia in those realms too, and they'll get their kids involved and, and things like that. So I do think that there's some possibilities in, in these places, especially places that have a strong sports culture. You know, and I, from what I understand too, I, I like the, the, the model of what it's looking like in Europe, for example, in Australia. Um, is is a little bit less about the like the flip quick money mentality and a little bit more about the collector's mentality, which it's from what I've seen and what I've observed and heard and things. And I like that, you know, I think that, you know, that I think that also lends to the possibility of soccer doing really well in sports cards into the into the future, because it seems like a lot of the people who are getting into sports cards in in Europe, for example, are into it for the collector's aspects because of how much they love soccer. Uh, so I, I like that. I think it can create a, a, a healthier foundation for the development of, of sports cards in some of those places. You know, in China, I think a lot of it's more about like money making po possibilities, a little bit about collecting, but more about making money, which, you know, I, I think it's okay too for the for the environment in China. I think that's the reality of, of how people are approaching it and that's fine. In Europe, I think it's going to be more about the collector's mentality, which is also fine. You know, I think both of those are, are perfectly fine ways to build a foundation. But I do think both of those places in Australia as well have 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 a strong enough foundation to keep it keep it going long term and to continue to develop over time. And then we'll see what happens. But that's my thoughts on it. Anyway, I hope this was interesting or fun or useful or something like that. Peace. See you in the next one.